Okay, so in the last video, I mentioned that just as you can modify the wind zone using a script, you can modify the particle systems also using a script. Specifically, we'd be looking at changing the emission rate because we talked about how we want to make the storm go from a like a light flurry to a more powerful storm. So if you click on one of the particle systems, you come over here to the inspector. I'm just going to point out what we're going to be changing. So we have a mission. We have it set to 75. This is the number we're going to be changing. We're going to start with a much smaller number and gradually work up to 75. And you'll see how the storm will become more and more intense. If you go beyond 75, keep in mind you may need to increase the max particles. I mentioned this before that as you increase or change, not necessarily increase, as you change one attribute, you might find yourself having to change other attributes to compensate. So max particles is just that. This is the most amount of particles this particle system will have on the screen at any given time. So if you go beyond this number, you might accidentally exceed that. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're going to create a script and attach it to these particle systems. So right click, create, C shop, and we'll just call this snow. Don't think we've used that for anything. We've used snowflake, storm, snowfall. We haven't used just snow though. And we're gonna click on our particle system and drag and drop it and click on our other particle system and drag and drop it. And then we're going to open up that script. Now, I personally am not a big fan of what Unity has done with how you modify a particle system using a C-sharp script, but we'll work with what we have. I just find that modifying other components are a little bit easier. Uh, I realize that particle systems are probably the most complicated component so that's probably why they've done it the way that they have but it's going to look a little bit different if you've if you've watched some of my other videos uh, using get component this might look a little bit different so first we're just going to clear out the remark files we really don't need these if I hadn't mentioned it before where you see that double forward slash it means it's a remark it means that this is purely documentation for the purpose of the person doing the coding or debugging, it doesn't it doesn't actually get executed by Unity. And to try to minimize mistakes, I actually wrote the code down ahead of time, at least some of it. So that's what you see me doing now. But I'll still explain it even though I'm pasting it in. Okay, so typical like with variables, you're putting it between the public class and before the start. So rather than being public, this is going to be a private particle system, snow PS, short for snow particle system. You can call this whatever you want. So what you're saying here is that this is a particle system type variable. That's it. That's all you're saying. You're not actually assigning anything to it. You're just saying what this, the type of, of uh, object that's going to be associated with that variable. Public float E-rate 5.0 F. Again, if you use a decimal, you need to indicate that it's a, uh, that it's intentional, that it's a float. E-rate, short for emission rate, you can call it whatever you want. Again, recommend names that are meaningful to you. Calling this E-rate means absolutely nothing to Unity at this point. It just sees a variable and that you've given it this value. That's it. It doesn't know that it's actually a rate. Again, that's just for your benefit. Now this will look a little bit more familiar because this is where we get into get component. So snow PS, so this is this, is equal to get component particle system. Now you could say, wait a minute, isn't this redundant? And the answer is no. Because this is saying what kind of object is going to be associated with this variable. This is saying precisely what is going to be associated with that variable. It's just you're doing it in two lines. So in other words, um, this said that it's going to be a particle system type. This is saying which particle system. Because since there's nothing in front of the get component, 
That means this is grabbing the uh, the object that the script is attached to. It's attached the, to the snow particle systems. That is the particle system that's being utilized. So again, this is referring to whatever object the script is attached to. So now you're saying which particle system snow PS is going to have. It's the one the script is attached to. Hope that wasn't too circular of an argument or explanation rather. Now in the update section, we're now making another variable. This time the word emission is going to be equal to the snow PS. So again, not a coincidence. We're referring to this again. The snow PS emission. So this is what I'm saying about how it's a little bit more difficult to, dr to drill down. You can't just do component, particle system, emission. You have to break it down this way. Why? Don't know. So emission is going to be equal to specifically the snow PS emission. And this is where we actually apply. So now we take that emission dot rate over time equals E rate. So that's where we finally take this and we apply it to the rate over time. So like I said, you have to go a couple steps. You have to associate the particle system with snow PS. And then you have to drill down to the emission portion of snow PS. I think it's actually considered the module, but that's OK. And then within emission, you then get to the rate over time, and now you can modify the rate over time. Like I said, I really don't like it. It's not that bad. It's still only uh, five lines of code. It's just that uh, the logical leap, it takes a little bit more explaining rather than just banging it out in one line, saying particle system, dot emission, dot rate over time, whatever reason, can't do it. Okay, so now 5.0 is the rate of a time. So if we run this now, uh, once we attach it to the particle systems, I don't think we did yet, it will change the rate from the, current, the starting rate of 75 all the way down to 5. So first, let's see if we attached it. We Yes, we did. So let's run it. Okay. Now, let's that looked too fast, though. See, right over time. Rate over time is 75. So again, it's not a coincidence. It's the same verbiage. But it didn't look like it actually made the change. We saved it. Let's, um, since that's a public, even though I change it here, we're going to have to change it in the inspector as well. Let's change that to something crazy like 2000. So even though we change it in the script because it's a public, we have to change it there as well. Okay, so that is definitely higher. So it's definitely applying it. Maybe it was just a coincidence, and there's the gap that I was talking about because there's too many particles on the screen, or should I say you hit the limit, and it couldn't create any more particles. So that was actually fine. I'm not sure why the 5 didn't look quite right. It looked like it was really kind of weak, but that is definitely working. So let's try... Let's send that down to 1 and save it.
Oh, I'm sorry. I just said it too that you have to change the variable here. So there, very light flurry. So sorry about that. I'm not sure why the 5 didn't look quite right, because 5 is way lower than 75, and yet for some reason it didn't really look like it was that much lighter. Okay. So false alarm, it is definitely working. So what we're going to do is this. I enumerator. And we'll call this snow VOL for volume brackets yield return. Oops, I always do that. Yield return new. Wait four seconds. So we'll wait, say, 10 seconds. And then what we'll do is we'll change the E-rate. So E-rate. And we're going to change it to something ridiculously high. Just so you know that this is working. Now, since we created this coroutine, we actually have to call it. It won't just automatically happen on its own. And we don't want this to be triggered too many times. We only want it to happen once, so we will put it up in the start section. That way it gets called only once. So, start coroutine, and it is snow volume. Oops. That should do it. So again, you wouldn't do it that dramatically. Yes, you can wait 10 seconds, but what I mean is you wouldn't change it from like 1 to 500 more than likely. Okay, so we'll save it one more time. So it's going to be very light. And then after 10 seconds, suddenly it becomes much, much heavier. So now we'll do one more, just now that we know it definitely works. What we do is say make this be 100. And then you can just kind of rinse and repeat within the coroutine. So let's, we won't wait as long because we know it's working. We wanted to have a good sense of how fast it was running. Then we save. So six seconds of this. Six seconds of this. Six seconds. I probably should have turned down the wind, like I said. That way it would have been more obvious. Actually, let's do that for now. Let's jump over to our other script, Storm. And we'll just change this to 1, just so the wind isn't disturbing it as much. And we'll go back to Snow. And we'll make this even shorter. So four seconds, four seconds, and 
And once it starts getting heavier, it's harder to tell that's increasing. But that's actually a good thing. Because clearly that's much heavier than what we start off with. You you really don't want these distinct changes. And, and yeah, we hit the limit again. You don't want these distinct changes in uh, storm uh, intensity unless unless maybe someone's like casting a spell or doing something and suddenly causes a snowstorm. Otherwise, you want it to be a little bit more consistent. So I think that should about do it for this one. Um, what we can do is we'll make one last change because, as I mentioned, we're hitting that max particle. So let's bump that up to like 8,000. You actually can do the math to figure out what the max is because you look at the rate over time, so you know how many are being generated, and you can see how long they're being generated, how long they stay on the screen. So it's actually pretty easy to do the math. I just don't feel like it. Sorry. Okay, and. And we'll like double this at the end to 800. Yeah, that's definitely getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Excellent. And we still did hit the max. Okay, I think that should do it. So I think that's probably it for this series, unless there's something specific you guys want to see. But now that you've seen the basic about using multiple particle systems to try to make the snow look a little bit more complicated, having the uh, flakes crisscross, and then um, we added a wind system a wind zone that way it moves it around more at uh, inconsistent intervals and then we've now added the rate of the snow itself changes over time so you actually have a pretty decent snowstorm now so i think that should about do it if you have any questions just let me know